Hi, I'm Anders. I come with bad news. The numbers you're seeing on the screens to the sides now is the number of tons of CO2 emitted by the IT industry since I stepped on stage. And that number is increasing all the time. Today, the IT industry amounts to around 4% of the world's total CO2 emissions. And this is a conservative estimate. The more pessimistic ones have this way up at seven. That means that our industry, the IT industry, is now a bigger polluter than the aviation industry. And we are predicted to reach 14% of global emissions by 2040. So the invisible stuff that we make has a very serious impact on the real world. If the IT industry was a country, we would be a polluter comparable to Japan. So this is a talk that I originally did back in 2009 here at NDC called Green Code. Now that we have to deliver on the Paris Climate Accord, we have the United Nations sustainability goals that are to be reached uh, within the end of the decade, I figured it was good to go back. And one of the stories I brought up when I did the original 2009 talk was a story about this book, Programming Pearls by John Bentley. It was a very formative book for me as a young programmer. And in this book, John Bentley has an example, a rather extreme example, but it's a very good example of two different computers and two different algorithms. One was the Trash 80 computer, and the other was the DEC Alpha, which was the best computer you could get at the time. And he did a little experiment where he implemented two different sorting algorithms. One that was very naive, that ran on the fast computer, and one that was a bit more clever, running on the Trash 80. And he realized that they broke even fairly quickly. Only at 7,500 records, and after that, the, the old computer started outperforming the new one. So computer science does matter. All the things that, uh, that are behind the scenes of the code we write, they make a difference. But we have come a long way since 2009, and the world is a bit different now from uh, when John Bentley wrote this book at the end of the 90s. So this is a game called The Towers of Hanoi. It's a puzzle. Anyone familiar with this puzzle? Yeah, quite a few. So the idea is that you're going to move the disks from one side to the, to the other, uh, and they have to be stacked in order. This is a perfect sort of computer science-y uh, experiment one can do. And back in 2012, some researchers actually did that uh, in a study of the impact of software on green IT. And one of the things they did was they took two sort of well-known algorithms to solve this puzzle that were regarded as equally efficient speed-wise, written in C++, and then measured the energy usage for the two different algorithms. One of the algorithms was a recursive algorithm. The other one was an iterative algorithm. The iterative algorithm used almost five times as much energy as the other one, while they had mostly the same performance speed-wise. So speed isn't the only thing anymore. Energy use is also very different, important. And there was a survey done last year on the energy efficiency of different programming languages. Not surprisingly, C comes out on top. C Sharp, which I guess many of you program, was in 15th place. And um, you had some strange ones in there, like Ada, which is a antiquated language that uh, nobody really uses any longer, was one of the most efficient ones measured. So there are surprises there. And uh, of course, this is not the same for all programming uh, challenges as well. So it might be a good idea to learn a few different languages so that you have different tools in your tool chest for different problems. But one interesting thing they found was this. In that study, they come, came up with a very simple formula for calculating energy efficiency. It's just 
about the useful work done divided by the, use, the energy spent to do the work. That's simple. And that brings us to sort of the elephant in the room when it, with, when it comes to this. Something that is built upon the premise of doing nothing useful but spending energy to mine crypto. So if you look at the big three cryptocurrencies, they have a carbon footprint comparable to Argentina. Argentina is a big country. That's more than four times the energy footprint of Norway. Um, and if we say on the th theme of countries, they would, it would be the 11th most energy hungry country in the world. Now, that's, this is just the top three cryptocurrencies. And it produces a load of electronic waste, like 37 kilotons. That's an abstract number. It's the weight of uh, almost five Eiffel Towers. But if you look at, uh, look at just one single transaction on the Bitcoin, it would have the energy consumption of a Norwegian household for two months. It could be over two and a half million credit card transactions, and it produces electronic waste similar to the weight of an iPad. That's one single transaction. This thing is not sustainable. So any of you who own crypto, shame on you. <laughs> but there are other things we do that are fairly comparable to this. Training AI model is very energy hungry. Training a typical AI model can amount to CO2 emissions uh, of around 28 tons of CO2. That's a common regular model. So you should think about whether using AI to solve a problem is the right way. And I've been working with clients who have gone away from using AI to solve things with more traditional algorithms because it's just not sustainable. It does not fit with their company's sustainability goals, and it's also not economically viable. Because that's one of the things here. Getting green is a good, makes good economic sense as well. But let's do something easy. You can start with your, uh, your own sites. There is something called the website carbon calculator that will give you an estimate of your own energy users. So just type in your URL. Let's try with one that we all know fairly well, and this is the Oslo. Just calculating a bit. Oops. NDC Oslo is not a very carbon-friendly uh, website. Sorry about that, folks. But there are some things we can do to actually figure out why this happened. Why does NDC Oslo's website have this problem? And the tools to, to sort of get an insight into that are right there in your browser. So you can pull up the lighthouse and instrument things and just look at it. So now when we're loading NDC Oslo now, we can see the things that are happening uh, along the way. And uh, these green bars is the CPU that is being spent. And the NDC Oslo website has loads of JavaScript on there and uh, keeps the CPU running fairly on max for a long time. Uh, you have see this energy impact is high. And when you distribute this on loads of users visiting that web page to, fin uh, to find out wh what talk to go to and so forth, this adds up. And it's probably an easy thing, you thing to change. But another thing is that going green can give you a much better user experience because much of the energy is spent delivering services to our end users. As much as 50% actually is not happening at the back end. It's happening between the back end and the, on the front end. If we do dark modes on newer OLED screens, we can actually have an energy reduction of nearly 50%. That gives good user experience because you don't burn through your user's battery that fast. And having services served closer to where the user is in the world means less network traffic and means that you get a more responsive app. It also means that you spend way lot en less energy on delivering your services. So all of these things make a difference. And to sort of evangelize this, my company started something called the Green Software Foundation together with Microsoft, Accenture, ThoughtWorks, and many other industry players to create the tools to get insight into this. 
Um, this is part of the Linux Foundation, and what we do is provide open tools for measuring, for educating, and for optimizing the energy uses of your services. Because we all have to contribute to, to reach the goals of the Par Paris Climate Accord. But it's not easy to know where to start. So one place is to just visit greensoftware.foundation and we have loads of tools there that are free to use that you can, can use to get, get that insight to, to what's happening in your own software. So thank you. I hope you all go out and make greener software from, from this day on into the future, because there is hope. We can change these things. It's all in our hands. It's in our power. This has been Green Code 2022. Thank you all for coming, and have a great rest of the NDC conference.